Alright, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today, so let's get straight into it here. The first story, the Masters Mr. Olympia. So we just posted in the last video a discussion about the Masters Olympia. And literally the next day after that video, they posted, I think this is a response to that, announcing what the prize money would be. Well, kind of. So the big topic of discussion was Victor Martinez had said in an interview, um, what is the incentive for a Masters bodybuilder to come back and compete in the Masters Olympia? They haven't told us what the prize money is, et cetera, et cetera. And I made a video about that talking about, you know, if a guy like Dexter or Victor or even Jay Cutler were to come back and do the Masters Olympia, what is the financial incentive for them other than a trophy or a title? Because up until now, they had not made that announcement. So they just announced that the overall prize money will be $229,000. Now, this is interesting because at first glance, you're like, well, that's that's really good for a bodybuilding show to be giving away almost a quarter million dollars. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to downplay it. I think any bodybuilding contest that's added to the schedule that wasn't there before, that's paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to the athletes is a net positive thing. It's a good thing. But with that being said, I think this means they're not going to be matching the prize money from the last Masters Olympia, which only had four divisions and $250,000 overall to split between those four divisions. The last Masters Olympia, if you guys didn't watch my last video, was in 2012. And the last Masters Olympia champion was Dexter Jackson. And for winning that show, he got $75,000, which I actually think is a really impressive prize purse. For a show back in 2012, that's not the Arnold Classic, not the New York Pro, not the actual Olympia. But here we are over a decade later, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say they're going to be paying less than that. Now, granted, even though there's 10 divisions, I'm sure they're going to put their primary focus financially on men's open. But it is, it is worth noting here that there is less overall prize money than there was in 2012, just by $20,000, so not a lot less, but more divisions. More than double the divisions, almost triple the divisions. There's 10 now instead of four. And that prize money has got to be split 10 ways. So when you see that big number, almost a quarter million dollars, just keep in mind, they've got to split that amongst 10 divisions. And if you look back again, it looks like they paid the top five in 2012. Dexter, 75,000. Tony Freeman, 35,000. Dennis James, 25,000. Ed Nunn, 10,000. And Ronnie Rockle, 5,000. So they paid the top five if they do that for each category. At this year's Master Olympia, that means that $230,000 is going to be split 50 ways, 5 times 10, which is quite the, uh, quite the division. So, like I said, I think it's good that there's a new show, that they're paying a lot of money. I also think it's good that they announced this pretty immediately um, after it became a topic of discussion. Like I said, this was like less than a day after I made my video, so I'm, I'm glad they kind of got out in front of it and said how much they're paying. I would like to see the breakdown of how much they're paying each division and each division winner. And I do think this whole prize money discussion is a discussion worth having because, again, when this topic of conversation first came out, the idea that they were going to bring back the Masters Olympia, the initial pushback was, well, these guys are going to be risking their health to come back at over 40 or over 45 or in their 50s or 60s or whenever they, whatever age they are. Past 40 is a pretty that you're really upping your risk coming back to compete. And if you want legends to come back, like former top Olympians, champions of like big shows, if you want legendary bodybuilders to come back and put their health on the line, I think there should be some substantial prize money because nobody really wants to see a Masters Olympia that's just full of current Masters pros. Because there's a lot of Masters pros right now that not a lot of people know about. And they're placing like outside of the top 10 at some of the smallest pro shows. And again, it does seem like this is an invitational because they're asking for people's contest resumes and applications. So they are kind of picking who they want, which I think would imply they're, they want to pick the best of the best. But look, at the end of the day, I just want to see these guys get paid well, these guys that come to compete at this show. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think this $229,000 overall purse is enough? Do you think it should be more? Do you think they're going to still match or try to do better than even um, the 2012 Olympia? $75,000 for first place. It seems like that would be a tough task, splitting this amount of money uh, 50 ways. And it seems like it would be an even tougher task to take more than a quarter of that amount, which is what $75,000 would be, or more than a third of that amount, 
and give it to the winner of one, just one of those 10 divisions. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this prize money. I do think it's an interesting discussion. And like I said, a discussion I think worth having. And I'm curious to read your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. I will be reading all of them as usual. All right, now next up in the news, let's talk about the latest physique update from William Bonac. Now, it's crazy to think that we're already just one week out from the Arnold Classic. We're already exactly one week out from the finals. And Bonac says in the caption of this post, one more week to go, he's working on his weakest pose, which is the abs and thighs, to make it his strongest post pose. But he says this picture was taken on the 18th of February, so about a week ago, which would mean this was two weeks out instead of one. Now, this too has been a topic of conversation for Bonac going into the Arnold Classic because typically when they call for an abs and thighs, Bonac hits the side variation where he can show his serratus, his obliques, that side abdominal wall, and he never really hits it straight on. But I actually don't think he looks that bad from the straight on perspective. Obviously, it's not his prettiest shot just because of the way he's built. He's got so much muscle on his frame, and he's really got a shorter midsection, which kind of doesn't lend itself to a more aesthetic look. It kind of looks, I guess, blocky. But I really don't think he looks bad in that pose, and I prefer it to the side profile pose, and because really that's what the judges are wanting to see. But what do you guys think? How do you think Bonac looks in this pose? Do you prefer it to the side shot? And how do you think he's going to place at the Arnold Classic? Is there a chance that he earns his third Arnold Classic title? He is the only two-time Arnold Classic champion in this lineup. Does that give him some kind of on-paper advantage? Now, next up in the news, I want to talk about this latest posing video posted by Derek Lunsford. And I really think that Derek, um, he's really one of my favorite bodybuilders right now and open to be completely honest with you guys. He calls this productive improvement season. We know now he's not doing the Arnold Classic, but he looks incredible here. Derek from the front, like I said, one of my favorite open bodybuilders, the flare in his lats from the front, the V taper, the vacuum pose, everything about his front shots to me where he shows off that width. Is just crazy impressive. And from the back, it, it's crazy that I say from the front because that, that's the thing where he came out on stage at the Olympia and looked super impressive in the front relax and the front lat spread and the front uh, double bicep. But his back is really what he's known for. His back is really what actually makes him dangerous. Thick, wide, dense condition lats, striated glutes, great hamstring separation, and he still has it even in the offseason. He's, he's got striated glutes more so than some guys that are prepping for the Arnold Classic right now. I really, really would have liked to see Derek jump in this Arnold Classic lineup, but we know now we're not going to get to see that. Um, but I, I just think this posing video is a perfect example of how good he looks. This is offseason Derek. He's got striated glutes and separated hamstrings. It's just, it's very impressive what he's able to do. And like I said in yesterday's discussion about Chris Bumstead potentially doing an open show, you got to give some props to Hani Rambot here because Hani is a miracle worker. He is the one that turned around Derek's physique to get Derek to win that first 212 title. He is the one that brought Derek into the Olympia to play second to another guy that Hani was coaching. And I think he could do the same thing with Chris Bumstead. I, I really don't think, I said this in the last video, I don't think Chris would have to do much to win a regular open show. And by that, I mean he doesn't need to push his physique super hard compared to how he pushes it for classic. I think his physique as is, classic physique size with maybe a little bit more fullness, could win an open show. Not the Open Olympia, but could win an open show. But then I think with Hani's tutelage, he could go into the Open Olympia if he wanted to after proving that he could win an open show, put on some size under Hani and place well at the Open Olympia. And I think Derek is a perfect example of that. Look at how much size Derek has put on without sacrificing his shape, without really sacrificing his lines. He's still got the crazy V taper. He can still hit a vacuum pose. He's still crazy separated in the abs, in the vacuum pose, in the off season in this video. Derek to me, like I said, hands down, one of my favorite open bodybuilders right now, if not my favorite. Now, next up in the news, let's talk about Sean the Giant Killer Clarita at one week out from the Arnold Classic. He says he's weighing 192 pounds here. Compared to one week out from the Olympia 2022, he was weighing 184 pounds. So at one week out, he's eight pounds heavier so far. Now, I don't see a crazy difference between the two photos. He looks a lot fuller, obviously, in the Arnold photo because he's eight pounds heavier. Uh, but other than that, I don't see a crazy difference between these two pictures. And again, I think the question with Sean 
is does he need to play the size game to be competitive and open? And if so, how much does he need to play it? Because I really think conditioning is his strong suit. He can be 100 pounds lighter than a lot of these guys and then still beat them on conditioning. So how much difference is 8, 10, 15, 20 pounds going to make if he has to sacrifice some conditioning to achieve that extra weight or that extra size or that extra fullness? That's what I'm looking to see here from Clarita because keep in mind, he is well under that 212 weight limit. So the restriction on 212 isn't really changing anything for him. Him going to open... It's not like you're setting him free now and he can go crazy and weigh whatever he wants. He was already weighing what he could weigh. I think he's already close to maxing out his frame because he is much shorter than even the typical 212 competitor. So him going to open, it's not like, well, now he doesn't have to weigh under 212 so he can just gain 30 pounds and come in heavier. So when you talk about him coming in maybe 10 pounds heavier, 8 pounds heavier on stage, the question to me really is, Will he be sacrificing any conditioning to do that? Because I think he needs to be as sharp as possible to beat a lot of the guys in this lineup because he is significantly smaller. You've got, what, three or four guys that are nearly 300 pounds. Andrew Jacked, Big Rami, Samson Dowda. And again, I think the fact that he weighs eight pounds heavier at one week out confirms that that is going to be part of the strategy to try to come in fuller and a little bit bigger. And with the Arnold being just a couple months after the Olympia, how much of that is actual quality stage muscle versus just fullness or water even? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you think this is going to shake out for Sean Clarita and his open Arnold Classic debut? Can he place top three here? Will he be a factor? Could he be a threat to win? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. Click that bell notification icon as well. Use code NSP10 on the Fanmeo link in the description box below to buy the Arnold pay-per-view. You can get it for $45 instead of $60. When you use that code NSP10, it helps out me, helps out the Arnold. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. It's showtime.